Hey guys, and welcome back to Gwent, the Witcher card game. My name is Jagoras, and today we're going to start looking at some budget rank decks. We've covered the beginner decks, now it's time to put on our big boy trousers and jump into ranked. Um, and I'm going to show you guys some of the kind of decks that you can run uh, for ranked if you want to start to rank up that are a little bit more budget. I don't think that these decks will necessarily get you all the way to rank 15, but I definitely think you can start to use them to climb up the ranks. And uh, we're going to begin with a Nilfgaard deck, and that is the Revealing Cow deck. Uh, and this is a very reveal-focused deck. Uh, the Nilfgaard actually recently got buffed. For example, Spotters now, um, while they're in your hand deck or on the battlefield, they gain strength. So you can actually kind of like leave these in your deck and then find them later on, and they'll they'll basically get buffed by all of the reveals. But this is the Revealing Cow deck. I call it the Revealing Cow deck because we have lots of reveals and we have Rot Tosser, which throws cows at people. Um, in terms of expensive cards, I'm currently running two legendaries in this deck. Uh, Decoy, Decoy you actually get for free when you hit level 20 and account level 20. And uh, Tibor Egerbracht, if your opponent has not passed being 15 base strength, so that's a 22 card, then they draw and reveal a card, okay? Um, if you don't have Tibor, you know, you can always run something like I mean, Gerald, Geralt, for example, works in this deck uh, as a gold card. You know, Triss, also a good gold card. She's just kind of a generic, you know. She, she's got eight strength and she removes four. So she's kind of like the same strength as Geralt, but with the added bonus of a remove. Igni is another card that you can kind of run in more or less any deck. These are some of the gold card options you have. Um, decoy, you know, if you, if you don't have have decoy there are again other options in here i mean we've got fringilla fringilla is just like she's you get it for free and she's 10 strength you know she's just strong similarly serret uh, actually has some reveal synergies with removal so you know if you, if you want a little bit of removal that's there um and there are other options the other thing i'm going to point out is um siri you get for free at level 18 so she's a really good card because you get her back into your hand uh if you lose but maybe not necessarily worth investing in crafting Okay, then we have a, a Vatia de Rideau. You reveal two cards in your hand, and then for each card you revealed, you then reveal one in their hand. So this guy's worth up to four reveals, which, which synergizes really well with the Manganels. Uh, and then we have Yennefer. Yennefer, the Conjurer, is just in every deck at the moment. This is one of the purple cards I would really recommend crafting. You play her, you know, early on in the round, and as the round progresses, she keeps removing strength from the strongest non-gold units. And now if there's more than one unit tied for strength, then she removes strength from both of them. So basically if they have a unit at say 10 strength, she'll bring it down to nine and then down to eight. And then maybe they also have a unit at eight strength. And now she's bringing both of those units down from eight to seven, down to six. And then they have a unit at six strength and then you can kind of see how this works. And it's very easy to get much more than the five value that Yennefer is worth out of her. And she's definitely a target for removal. Uh, then moving on to our silver cards, we have Alrich. Albrich is a blue, so kind of fairly easy to get. If possible, draw a card, then your opponent draws a card and reveals it. So nine strength, you both get a draw, but you get to see what theirs is, um, which I think is quite nice. Then we have Van Hamer. Van Hamer is kind of just like a better spotter. So he, uh, he has eight starting strength rather than the four, and he gains strength every time you reveal a card. Uh, then we have Scorch and Demeritian Bomb, which you guys should be familiar with by now, removing the strongest gold unit and resetting. Um, and then we have jo Joachim Dewet. Joachim, you pay play on the opponent's side and give them five, but he then draws you a loyal non-gold, so silvers or bronzes. He'll draw you one of those, add eight to its strength. So, you know, he's, he's usually pretty good because, you know, most of these have, you know, more than five strength and either way you're getting eight. Um, and then we have Decoy, which allows you to like replay a non-gold non-relentless. So you can use him to replay a Rot Tosser if you want to throw out another Rot Tosser. You could replay a Spotter if you want to spot someone else. You could replay uh, Albrich, you know, if you want to um, if you want to draw another card. There's there's kind of options, and he's quite a nice card to run as well. Um, so that's it for Silvers. Then we have our counter strategy. So we have two First Lights to counter some weather strategies. And we have the Dimeritium Shackles and the Dimeritium Bombs. These, for example, you can use in synergy with Alzer's Thunder to remove a gold card that might be problematic, such as Yennefer the Conjurer. So if your opponent plays this, if you shackles or bomb it, it makes it a silver, at which point you can then target it with the Alzer's Thunder. Uh, in terms of our attack units, we have the three spotters. They reveal a random card in your opponent's hand. We have the two, uh, sorry, the alchemist, the two spotters, which get better as you reveal cards. Three mangonels, because this is big damage, um, especially if you play it in conjunction with Emma Van Emrys or with Vatia, and then we have the, the two Rot Tossers. And like I say, this is a deck that, that you can definitely run um, in ranked and, and use to climb the ladder. I think it's it's a pretty you know consistent deck. And I think the big thing about this deck is just using that extra information to your advantage. Without further ado, we'll jump into a game and I'll try and showcase this deck for you guys. My folk have suffered much. The North shall tuck tail and beg for mercy. 
Okay, so we've queued into Francesca, and in terms of the mulligan, I typically, you know, against a Francesca, she's not going to be really running weather. You hold these if you're against maybe monsters. We'll mulligan the first lights. We got Yennefer and a Rot Tosser. And then I like to mulligan the spotters because, you know, they get stronger, you know, the longer you have them, and they get strength whilst in the deck as well as in your hand. So, you know, you don't need them right now. You kind of want to draw them round two, round three when they've, when they've been buffed a little bit. So I think I want to mulligan one of the spotters, and we got Scorch, which is, you know, it's nice. Um, so, we're going into the game and we're going first. Now, usually this is the point where I'd open with a mangonel, but unfortunately we don't actually have a mangonel to open, which means I'm not really wanting to reveal too many of the cards in my hand. So, instead of that, what we can do is go for a Yennefer strategy. So, Yennefer will play her now, um, and basically what this means is as your opponent plays cards, they're going to get their strength removed, and that's kind of costly to them. The other things we can, you know, happily play in this strategy, stuff like Siri. Siri, you get her back if you don't win. So that's why she's really good. She's only six strength, but you know, you get her back. So if things go badly, what you can use her to maintain card advantage. Hawker Smuggler gains one strength whenever a revealed unit appears on the opposing side. So every time I play a unit that's visible, uh, she loses a strength. And this is kind of problematic because this will actually um, synergize. This will basically stop Yennefer from being able to be used to her full potential. So what I'm going to do here is just Alza Thunder that and just get rid of it. Uh, and then we no longer have to deal with it for the game. Um, and we still have Yennefer on the board. And the other thing with Yennefer is she often encourages your opponent to pass. Because your opponent doesn't like to deal with her. Because the more rounds that go on, the more value we're getting out of Yennefer currently. I mean, we saw her zap for one. So she's had six value, though we did end up using the Alza Thunder on that target. Um, and the longer the round goes on, like I say, the more problematic she is. And that's why I always kind of recommend playing her at the start of a round. Because the more turns there are, the more benefit you get. You know, she's not that useful if you play her, like, last card. She's going to zap one thing and be done with it. Um, so she's used her leader ability. Uh, at this point, we don't want to pass because, you know, we only have five points. She's going to catch us quite easily. Um, but we're going to play Siri. Because then, you know, if we lose the round, we get Siri back. We're not revealing cards, so we're not um, using up our reveals, which we want to use later. This is what I thought might happen, is that she might pass. Often, you know, when once you've played Siri, people don't want to try and catch you, so they just pass. She doesn't want to deal with Yennefer, and this way she's got Siri out of me. But, you know, I think I needed to play Siri there to guarantee that win. And I was going to say what I would expect her to do there was pass, because that's probably what I would have done, is just not deal with the Yennefer, pass on the Siri, and then kind of get on with it. And hopefully we'll see some mangonels here. There's one and Elsa's Thunder. Uh, I'm going to mulligan, because we get an extra mulligan on Nilfgaard, the spotter again. We don't need them right now. We got D Shackles, which maybe wasn't what we wanted to find, but it's not the end of the world. Uh, we'll open with the uh, with the mangonel. Uh, as you can see, they've been buffed. They now have six strength, which means they're a little bit trickier for your opponent to remove, which I think is really, really nice because it gives us, you know, options. Um, and if you play Vatia with one mangonel, you get eight damage out of the mangonel. You know, if you have play Vatia with two mangonels, you get 16 damage out of the mangonels. Like, it's, it's really, really big. This is something that we want to just straight remove. Um, so we can remove it by revealing cards, but in doing so, I feel like, you know, if we use this, we're over damaging. This will give us six damage. Uh, this will give us eight damage, and this will only give us two damage. So instead, what I'm going to do here is just Elza's Thunder, this one. Just get rid of him. Basically, when you're going up against the dwarf deck, you want to remove the dwarfs. Uh, and that's what we're trying to do here with our cards. Now we just kind of wait and see what she does. So she's played first light into a rally. She's pulled out a dwarf that adds strength to other dwarfs, but she doesn't have any other dwarfs, which isn't that useful. Uh, we're going to play our spotter for now. And this is where we start revealing what cards. It? And it's just kind of having a look at what she has in hand. She has a hawker healer we can see there. She's played Sheldon Skaggs, so now we can afford to start doing a lot of damage. Um, but in actual fact, what we might just do here is Scorch. Because, again, we're removing her cards and keeping control of the board. Uh, but, you know, if, if, if we weaken her cards too much, Scorch isn't going to have a lot of use. And using Scorch for 10 value, I think, is pretty good. So I reckon she'll, yeah, she'll attack the, uh, the uh, mangonel. What we can do here is we could shackles the mangonel to fix it. But in actual fact, I think what we'll just do is we'll play our uh, Vatia now. I knew you would ask. We're going to show her the Rot Tosser and the shackles, I think. Like, sometimes I like to show them Tibor because there's nothing they can really do about it. Um, and you can see we revealed two cards in her hand and a few cards in our hand. Um, and now she can actually remove the mangonel. So if I were her, I'd probably play that and get rid of it. Like, play this guy and get rid of it. Um, if she doesn't, what we can do on the next turn is uh, we can Shackles it or we can uh, we can Emir, basically, and uh, Elven and then, you know, get more value out of our Mangonel. So she chose to get rid of it, which I think was the right choice. Uh, at this point, I mean, maybe we play Tibor, but in, in fact, I might just pass. 
and then go on to the next round. I mean, we've got, we've got like, not super useful cards in hand, so it's okay to pass here. Uh, and then just let her kind of catch up. I mean, I would rather get another card draw and then get the extra mulligan and try and find another manganel. Otherwise, you know, your revealing isn't as useful as it, it can be. Right. And at this point, you know, she does have to play a couple cards to catch up, which means that we then have card advantage going into the next hand. And we know that she has the two hawker helos. Oh, well, now we don't. Ooh, little but there we go. And she's not keeping anything going into the next uh, turn because we did remove those dwarfs that, that were kept, the resilient dwarfs, so... I think we're in a good position here. We've got Tibor that's worth 22, you know. So that's always an option. Um, and we'll see what we get. Spotter. So you can see this is the time when we want to find spotters because they're quite strong. We're going to get rid of the shackles because we have the bomb in hand. Um, not the spot. Yeah, that's a spotter. And we got an alchemist. So alchemist, we've got more reveals and that can buff up the spotter some more. So we want to play these while we can. Uh, we're going to open with Emir just to see what she's got in her hand. And this allows us to kind of be more tactical because, you know, if we know her hand 100%, we're in a really good position. Next thing we'll do, spot her. There we go. We can now see what her full hand. And this is this is game in hand, you guys. She just doesn't have enough options. I mean, she can spawn a base copy of the last non-gold special card played and then banish it. So she can get two Thunderbolt potions. Um, but that's only worth, you know... Oh, I guess she went for Rally. It's not worth an awful lot. There's a Defender. So she's got 12 and 4, 16. Uh, this is another 9. This is... A bit and this is a lightning potion i think what we'll do uh we've got the d-bomb so we can actually reset them if they if they play the rot tosser hmm i think we play tibble for now i mean they do get a card which could be you know problematic for us but as it is you know i think they got they got uh, a commando and a neophyte which is nice no mercy! um but the thing is, we got another strength on this, and we got 22. So, you know, we've got we've got more from them than they got from us, I think. Uh, next step we'll do here is we'll play the cow on this row. This basically kind of encourages her to play the hawker healer, because the hawker healer only has two strengths. So then it will get removed instead of the defender. But the thing is, she doesn't want to play the hawker healer until she's played the guard. Because really, she wants to play the guard uh, and then play the healer so that the guard gets buffed. But if she does that, the guard will get removed rather than... Uh, the guard will get removed. So then, here she's in a bit of a sticky position. Oh, my little day. And so there's the Hawker Healer, um, which now will get removed by the, uh, by the, uh, uh, cow. So it's, it's, it's still two value. Uh, I'm comfortable playing our spotter now. She has nothing she can do to remove it, so we'll just, we'll just pop her now. Uh, it doesn't matter where we put her, because she doesn't have Igni or anything. Um, uh, but if you were worried about Igni, you would put her in the back row, because then that row wouldn't add up to 20. That's the thing, all right. But as it is, you know, we have 47 strength. She has 35. She has another four in hand, but if we reset this, which we can do, you know, she's down to 27 plus the four. That gives us game in hand. I shall not fail. I got the neophyte, but it, it wasn't enough. And that's basically the, the matchup into dwarves. You want to make sure you remove the dwarves. You know, we're using the reveal and the clear strategies, and you saw kind of how how strong that was. Um, and also you saw the use of Yennefer um, and Siri. We'll jump into another game, and uh, I'll show you guys the deck once more. For Skellige's glory! The North shall tuck tail and beg for mercy. Okay, so we've queued into Skellige and the Kraken crate. Uh, in terms of the mulligan, it means we don't need first light. Very rarely do Skellige run weather these days. They used to run it quite a lot, but not so much these days. I'm going to get rid of my spotters, because again, I don't feel like I need them early on. Um, they get buffed as time goes on whilst being in the deck, so that's pretty okay. We have Tibor, we have Siri, Albrich, and Van Hamar. And he's actually opened with the Spectral Whale. Uh, fun fact, if you have Decoy, you can Decoy the Spectral Whale and play it on your opponent. Um, as things stand, though, we can just use this to remove it. And that's it, gone, which is nice. Um, just kind of get rid of that problem. Okay, so I think this round, uh, we may as well open with the Manganel. Um, we don't really have many other strategies in hand, and then we can use M here uh, if we want to remove units, for example, which is nice. Alternatively, we could Rot Tosser at the front row, um, which we'll do now. Basically, it means that because they both have six strength, they'll both get removed, and he'd have to play something on the, the front row to kind of retaliate. Uh, as it is, he has the Archer, so he's managed to deal with that quite succinctly. But because of that, these three guys now have six strength, and we can just Scorch all three. And an 18 value Scorch is definitely worth. And you should look for it when they have a lot of small units at similar strength. Um, it means that we haven't really done much with our, our Manganil strategy, but we still have options for that. You know, he still has five strength. 
Uh, we still have plenty of revealing in hand. And this is the thing, you don't have to reveal straight away. I think this is this is the thing that's kind of worth noting. Um, I think we start revealing now. We want to get that information. And that also gets six damage out. He's got Yennefer in hand, which means that we probably want to skip the round that he plays her, ideally. And the thing is, this round's gone on quite a lot, so he maybe should have played her earlier. Um, we'll play our spotter now. It gives us seven strength and, you know, more information, which is good. Keep together! And this is still alright, you know, we can reset this guy back down to base strength should we want to. Uh, I think what we do for now is we play Albrich. We draw a card, we got Yennefer, they draw a card, they got Toot. Uh, but, you know, that's okay. I'm really surprised with how aggressive he's playing this round, in all honesty. And it's like he does he does buff his his axeman, but we can shackles him. I think for now what I'm gonna do is play Siri. Yield and save me some time. You know, this puts us tied, which means if he wants to win the round, he has to play more cards. We have a uh, Tabor as well. So, you know, that that's again it has Manganel synergy. And he's going very heavily on this round, which I don't think Skellige should usually do. And I'm actually okay to keep playing cards here. I'm feeling, you know, fairly confident. Unfortunately, he got Gerald, our good old Gerald, Geralt out of that. So he got 22, uh, 12 out of our 22. But we did get also some Manganel shots. So we actually got, you know, 24 value. So we still beat him by uh, 12 by doing Let's that. Let's get this over with. And this would have been a good Yennefer around as, as well. The thing is, the more rounds that go on, the less value you get out of Yennefer. Um, so what I might actually do is play her now. Nothing to pick up because otherwise, what's you. the point, you know? What's the point? She, we haven't really utilized her. And we possibly should have played her a little bit earlier. I'm hoping this will force his pass. Though, you know, if I were him, I might play Commander's Horn just because um, it, it's valuable at the moment. It's worth 15, whereas later on it may not be worth as much. It also means that his units aren't as close in health. And this is, he's in that kind of awkward position. Does he, does he keep committing to this round? Knowing that I might, you know, keep playing cards, or, or does he does he give it up? He has to kind of make so that decision. What? Should I pound it into a poker? And he's definitely decided to commit here, which means he's gonna be playing the uh, he's gonna be playing the commander's horn uh, on the back row, I would imagine. And if he plays the commander's horn on the back row, what do we expect? He's gonna get twenty points out of it. He's gonna be on seventy-one. Uh, we have our shackles in hand. So we can start resetting things. We have Van Hamar, who's worth 14, I think. I could do the maths. The question is, can I be bothered to do the maths? The answer is, we're just gonna, we're gonna play it and hope that everything works out. We're 11 points ahead currently. And the thing is, if he, if he buffs the rows, um, you know, Yennefer is still gonna be removing strength. So that's nice. But he's gotta do it. He's basically gone all in on the first hand. Uh, that's down to 10. Um, I can, Timuritim shackles this guy, and he will go down to... What is his base rank? Like, four? So I think we do that. And that, that means that he has to play Yennefer if he wants to win the round. Because if he passes now, then my Yennefer triggers, and... Oh, he's not realized it. It's going to be a tie! But he has Yennefer in hand. Uh, so he basically gets the next round, unless I draw something massive. This is not that massive. We do get to mulligan one of them, though. We can see what's in his hand. That's okay. Okay, now the reveal is pretty good. It means we're gonna have a lot of points, basically, from our, from our spotter. She'll get a couple more points for this. He's got Adrenaline Rush, which isn't useful at this stage in the game. I'd imagine he'll play Yennefer to begin with. But depending on what value this card has, we probably win this round. You oh my god, he should have- he probably should have Yennefered the previous round. My god, that was such a weird game. I didn't expect a Skellige to go that, you know, in on a round. Um, as it is, what's he got? He's got nothing. There we go. Oh my gosh, that was a that was a well fought game. So that was a self harming uh, Skellige deck. Normally they don't go so heavy on one round because Skellige on the next round all of their units gain a strength, and on the subsequent round all of their units gain two strength or something like that. Like basically the second and third rounds are the ones where they really excel. And considering he had Yennefer in hand and didn't play her, like, he definitely should have played that early on to, you know, utilize in the round. I mean, we played it halfway through the round, which was suboptimal, um, and we still managed to win it. 
But that is the Revealing Cow deck, you guys. And uh, if you like this deck, you know, hit that thumbs up button. Um, like I say, you know, if you don't have some of the more rarer cards, you haven't hit level 20 yet, maybe you don't have Decoy. There are, you know, options that you can play. But the idea is basically to gain information on your opponent's deck and use that to your advantage to know kind of how to play against them. Um, and it's a deck that I definitely like to play. Uh, I've run it in ranked and I've seen some success with it. I'm currently sitting on rank 9, which isn't too bad. Um, but yeah, let me know what you thought of the deck, what kind of changes you'd make. I know a lot of people ask about uh, the uh, knights that you can get in the Nilfgaard deck, the 11 strength knights that also, they reveal one of your cards. Um, and the way I see it is like, I like to run, you know, alchemists because seven strength and revealing one of their cards, I think is, is worth the four strength debuff. You know, obviously like he's a, it's an 11 strength knight, but then you're giving them information on your cards. Uh, and I'd rather get information on their cards basically is, is what I'm thinking. Where is it? There it is. Uh, similarly, like you could run a third rot tosser, but because I have decoy, I don't mind only having two. I think having lots of mangonels is good to try and draw them consistently. Um, and spotters you've got two of, but then you've also got, you know, that Hamar. Um, but yeah, that's been it from me. Uh, hopefully catch you guys in the next video. If you've liked this video, like I say, hit that thumbs up button. Let me know what you want to see in the comments below. Uh, and if you want to find me live streaming Gwent, I have a Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash Jagoras, uh, along with a Twitter at Jagoras and a Discord. So if you ever need to find me, these are the places to go. Thanks for watching. Have a great day and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.